This is Michael Sanato with the Real News Network. Uh, here I have with us uh, Ginger uh, Jensen, uh, who is running for city council in Minneapolis. Um, so, uh, Ginger, can you tell us a little bit about you know why you're running uh, and why you're running as a socialist? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm running as a member of Socialist Alternative. Um, we've been endorsed by the Minnesota Nurses Association, the CWA State Council, the DSA locally, and basically over the last three years, I have been the executive director for 15 now, and. And that's the campaign broadly to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. It was initially launched by Socialist Alternative in Seattle through the election of council member Shama Sawant. And in Minnesota, it's been a three-year campaign because we initially uh, tried to gather signatures to put 15 on the ballot to voters. And it was a lot of the resistance of the Democratic Party-led city council there trying to kind of put hurdles in front of the movement. And, you know, we got nearly 20,000 signatures. We had countless days of action with low-wage workers, basically hundreds of low-wage workers, thousands in the city, have advocated for, organized, taken strike action for a $15 minimum wage. And it was the resistance of the Democratic Party locally that I think really um, shows that we need a political alternative in Minneapolis that's going to be firmly rooted in the social justice movements that are happening in our city and that needs representation in City Hall. And like to that end too, um, over the last 10 years I was a tip worker myself. I worked in the service industry and um, I think it's that kind of representation, people who are firmly rooted in social justice that need to have an organizing seat in City Hall. And um, I know I talked to Shama Sawant's people and uh, they told me that she wasn't allowed to, to speak here. So can you talk, talk a little bit about uh, how socialists can uh, you know, penetrate uh, or, you know, summits like this, conferences like this who, that are trying to do a, a really broad thing, uh, but cater more t a little towards the Democratic Party itself? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a really exciting moment that the Democratic Socialists of America have grown so much since the election of Dom Donald Trump. And, you know, in Socialist Alternative, we have often concentrate our resources into campaigns where we can have a real impact. That was how we got Shama Sawant elected. Um, and in many ways, I think that's what we're striving to do with the campaign in Minneapolis uh, for me to get elected to city council. And I think it's really exciting in this moment with conferences like this and a lot of questioning of the Democratic Party on the whole and the sort of uh, different strategies. Some people trying to go through the Democratic Party um, to bring about some kind of progressive change. And and others really calling for the need to build an independent socialist left or an independent party for working class people in which a socialist uh, debate can happen. I mean, in many ways, I think talking about socialism is really about talking um, democratic rights, people democratically planning and discussing and debating how our lives should run and how our lives uh, should be from day to day in our communities and workplaces, um, how to economically, you know, run the world, <laughs> and then also how to socially um, undo the racism, sexism, and bigotry that often is, well, that is frankly totally inherent and woven into the capitalist system. Uh, and how do you think socialists should try to get, um, you know, get legitimized by the media, by the press? Because, you know, obviously there's not uh, a lot of attention on socialists. And when there is, there's mostly yeah. like hit pieces about like Venezuela or how it, you know, it doesn't work. Even Bernie was attacked uh, for even uh, mentioning socialism. So uh, can you speak uh, a little bit on that, that front? Sure. I mean, again, I think this is, uh, if the reactionary right is given too much space and we don't build a viable left alternative, it's going to continue to grow. But I think with Bernie Sanders' campaign as an, um, an unapologetic democratic socialist running for the highest office in the U.S. on a program of free college education, a $15 minimum wage, saying Black Lives Matter, I think that really demonstrates to people that this is what socialist politics are about. But not building our own forces and not building our own party for working class people, I think we'll continue to sow illusions that somehow we can bring that program to light within the Democratic Party. And then broadly speaking with uh, Jeremy Corbyn's success over the weekend in really bringing down, um, well, Theresa May's government does not have a mandate to move forward. I think Mélenchon uh, building a very viable campaign in the last weeks of the French election shows that people are really hungry for ideas that put people and the planet before profit. And uh, Minneapolis has, uh, you know, a history of, um, you know, police abuse and, uh, you know, racism. So how will you seek to address that on the city council? And how do you think Democrats uh, on the city council and other uh, local positions uh, have been uh, ignoring these issues? Yeah. Well, like what we've done with the $15 minimum wage, through building social movements and grassroots pressure, we are making what the Democrats say is impossible, very possible. And I think that without building up a further deepening of the networks of Black Lives Matter and a lot of what we're 
work has already gone into anti-police brutality in Minneapolis and really connecting up the program that the Black Lives Matter movements put forward, I think there's no way to really address police uh, issues without building up that further grassroots pressure. But at a minimum, I think we need to be talking about an elected civilian review board that has actual teeth, hiring and firing powers, and oversight over budget priorities in the city of Minneapolis. And I think that we can build up that, you know, ability to make that happen um, through that grassroots pressure and actually doing the organizing necessary to take control over the police budget. Right now in um, St. Paul, uh, Officer Yanez is on trial at the moment uh, for the death of Philando Castile, who was murdered in front of his girlfriend and daughter um, in a very graphic video that went viral over the internet um, last year. And I think the reason that he's on trial right now is because of the pressure of these movements and really linking that up to having an organizing seat in City Hall, having working people firmly represented is going to be the way we can actually address the systemic police violence that is inherent in uh, many police forces across the United States. Well, uh, thank you, Ginger. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you.